I'm going to read the Bible verse for today. Today's Bible verse is Philippians chapter two, verse one through to eleven. Philippians chapter two, verse one through to eleven. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit; rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage; rather, he made himself nothing, by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this worship service today. Thank you that we can、uh, have this Christmas. You have come down two thousand years ago, taking on the flesh as a man, and you have given your life to save our, us from our sins. Thank you, Lord. Your word is light and lamp for our ways. This week we are going to walk in your light, and we acknowledge that your word is a lamp for us. Please bless Pastor Osumi, who is going to、uh, preach the sermon. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today I am going to、uh, preach a sermon. Recently, an adorable baby was born in Pastor Suzuki's family, and apparently, Pastor Suzuki didn't want to know the gender of the baby beforehand, and asked his wife to keep it secret from him. <laughs> and、uh, once upon a time. There was one doctor in Showa era that was famous for predicting the, the gender of the baby with one hundred percent certainty. So, when a mother comes, he would say, "Your baby would be a boy or a girl," and he would、um, predict with one hundred percent certainty without ultrasound machine or anything like that. So, once a mother was coming to for a checkup by the doctor. And she asked, "Doctor, is the baby that I have is is it going to be a boy or a girl?" Then the doctor answered straight away, "The baby will be a boy." Really, really. But then he wrote on the medical record, "The baby is a girl." Now, the baby was born, and if the baby turns out to be a boy, he would say. Just as I told you, it was a boy. But if it turns out to be a girl, then the mother would ask, "Hey, what happened? You told me that it would be a boy." Then the t- doctor will say, "Maybe you have mem- remembered wrong. I have written on my medical record it is going to be a girl." So this is how he maintained this 100% certainty. It's kind of like a magic. 
So Pastor Suzuki's baby was a girl, and his wife already knew beforehand, of course, thanks to the ultrasound diagnosis. And now I have a new relative, <laughs> and my relative family are growing. So when a baby is born, we call it Tanjo, the birth. But when Jesus was born, we call it Gokotan in Japanese, which means to descend or to come down. Why is it different from the normal birth? It is because he was not conceived by the earthly parents, but he was descended from heaven and he was conceived by the Holy Spirit to take on the flesh. He came through Mary, but actually he came down from the heaven, so we call it Gokotan. That he descended and came down on this earth. And we have a similar folk tale in Japan called Princess Kaguya. So, Princess Kaguya also had an extraordinary birth. When an old man went into the bamboo tree and he was cutting down the bamboo trees, he found one bamboo shining at its bottom part. So, he thought it's weird and he cut the bamboo. And it was good that he didn't cut at the lowest part. Then it would have killed Princess Kaguya. <laughs> so he killed a little bit upper part. And then he saw a very small girl sitting inside the ba bamboo. So that ba so Princess Kaguya didn't cry, oh yeah, oh yeah, but she was sitting already very politely over there. So, this old couple that didn't have child took Princess Kaguya as their daughter and raised her as a beautiful daughter. And one day, Princess Kaguya grew up and, and then a messenger from Moon comes to pick Kaguya, Princess Kaguya up. And it turns out that Princess Kaguya was actually the a uh, resident of the moon, that she came from the moon. So this messenger from the moon, kind of like an angel, came and told Princess Kaguya that because you have spent time on this dirty earth, you must be feeling sick. And so you should drink this medicine. But it is weird because <laughs> uh, I wonder how clean moon is. But anyway, so he told... Princess Kaguya to drink this medicine and then at the end the messenger put on heavenly robe on her and then once the Princess Kaguya put on the heavenly robe her heart became different from the earthly people which means that she lost all the memory that she spent on this earth as a human Princess Kaguya spend time on this earth and then experience many joy and also sorrow and also had this a beautiful relationship with the old couple as the daughter and parents. But when Princess Kaguya wore that uh, heavenly robe, she forgot all the memories and all the feelings that he, she had on earth. And once she put on that heavenly robe, she also lost the heart of sympathy towards the old couple who were crying at her departure, and she went back to the city of Moon without hesitation. And in a sense, Jesus is the same. If Jesus remained in heaven, he wouldn't have experienced all the things that we experience with this body, such as happiness, joy, pain, sorrow, and anger. He could have looked down from heaven and say, oh, that person is hurting from the disease or that person is crying because of the sorrow. He could understand as knowledge, but he wouldn't be able to empathize because he doesn't have that experience. He could know as the knowledge, but he couldn't feel that pain as his own. 
in the UCLA, the our Bible study we have on Friday, we are learning angelology, the study about angels. And there are many angels in the Bible. And in the Old Testament, there are also these messengers from God that is clearly different from other angels. And these、uh, messengers of God, the angelic being, some of them is Jesus before he was incarnated. Before Jesus came down on earth as a baby, he、uh, came down a few, few times on this earth without taking the human body. So he showed himself to Abraham, Moses, Joshua. But his essence, the person is the same, but there is a, one critical difference. Between these pre incarnated Jesus and Jesus who came down 2,000 years ago, there is one critical difference. What is it? It is the fact that he, because he took on his flesh, he experienced all sorts of joy, sorrow that we as the earthly human experience. That is why the Bible says, For we do not have the high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So if Jesus didn't take on the flesh, he wouldn't feel hungry, so he wouldn't be tempted by the devil. He wouldn't have cried. But because Jesus came on this earth taking on the flesh, he experienced all sorts of struggles, pain, and joy just like one of us. Why was Jesus able to forgive Peter and keep on loving him even after he denied Jesus and abandoned him? It is simple. It is because Jesus himself experienced the same struggle that Peter experienced. Peter must have felt that he didn't want to deny Jesus, but because of his weakness, he denied it. He wanted to follow Jesus, but he abandoned Jesus. And Jesus knew how Peter felt. So Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan is putting you on a sieve. I have prayed for you. So, when you stand up again,、uh, help your brothers. So, Jesus knew Peter's struggles. And if Jesus was the Jesus who stayed in heaven, He would be perfect and he would be able to feel how Peter felt. So he would have said, Peter, you are fired. What are you doing? But Jesus was able to、uh, resend Peter and forgive him and make him the foundation of the church. Jesus experienced with his own flesh all k i n d of Pain and sorrow that we have experienced and we are going to experience. That is why we, He is able to empathize with us and encourage us. He could encourage us from heaven, like the voice from heaven in the Old Testament. And if Jesus stayed in heaven all the time, He would be able to look down on us from heaven and just say the words of encouragement. But because he came down on this earth, he humbles himself down to our same eye level. And at times, he lowers himself even beneath us. Maybe、um, some of your parents would know if your children are crying or is sad because they got injured or they got some sad accident.
you wouldn't um, ask them, are you okay from um, looking down at us, but you would go beneath their eye level and encourage them, you are okay because I'm with you. Although you are a higher、uh, status parent, but you would go down beneath the child's level to encourage them. And Jesus is the same. Jesus came down from the highest place to even lower than us to encourage us and to build us up. That is Jesus, our Lord. In Hawaii, Molokai Island, there was a Belgian priest called Father Damian. And he, he went to the place where the lepers, isolated lepers, were contained in that、uh, island. And he did the best to help these lepers and share the gospel with them. But all the lepers said, Father Damian is a good man for sure. But he is different from us. They said so. So that Father Damian and all the lepers had a very deep barrier in between. And Father Damian couldn't go across that barrier. No matter how hard he tried and how much kindness he showed. So, Father Damian prayed to God God, please make me like them. Make me just like them. Make me a leper. Give me leprosy. He prayed. And one day,、uh, and one day, He saw his skin was turning white and he realized that he had become, become leprosy. If I had turned sick, I would become anxious. Last week,、uh, I went to the hospital for a checkup <laughs> and I drank.、Uh, Certain liquid to clean my ingestive system, a digestive system, and drank three liters of water. <laughs> That was a terrible experience. And the checkup went out fine, but I kind of felt anxious when they told me to have this checkup. And I, I think if you were told that you have become sick, your heart would be shaken. But Father Damian, when he got leprosy, he said, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I have become finally like them. I have become lep- lep- a leper. And from then on, he、uh, worked for the lepers even harder. And the lepers opened their hearts, seeing that Damian also had the same disease. And they had no barriers between them anymore. And his ministry spread within that island. And his,、uh, although he was momentarily cured from leprosy by some treatments, but in the end, he died due to the leprosy in the year 1889, April. Jesus was in heaven, never experiencing sin or sadness. But he came on the Christmas down on earth so that he could feel our pain and sorrows and problems. So, whatever problems and pain we have, we can bring that to Jesus, and Jesus is able to understand it. That is one of the reasons Jesus came down on this earth. The second reason. Of course, Jesus came down to know our hearts and to empathize with us, but he had a greater purpose. That is, to forgive our sins and to redeem us. Even if we receive the comfort and encouragement from Jesus on this earth, we cannot go to heaven. Uh, having our sins. The Bible says, just as people are destined to die once 
and after that to face judgment. Every man dies inevitably, and then after that, there is the judgment, the, which the Bible calls the second death. No one can get away from the first death, but those who are in Christ. Can be spared from this second death, from the judgment. The Bible is said to be summarized in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, which Luther called the Gospel in Miniature. It says,、uh, John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have eternal life. Jesus came down on this earth so that by believing in Jesus, we would have eternal life and will not perish, we will, that we will spend eternity in heaven. But if Jesus didn't descend from heaven and didn't take on the flesh like one of us, we wouldn't have the salvation. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, There is no forgiveness. The shedding of the blood, it is impossible without having the human body. Because we have the body, the blood is shed. So, if Jesus stayed in the heavenly form, like he appeared in the Old Testament, even if he was crucified, there would be no blood that was shed. But Jesus came on this earth. And he was whipped 39 times, and blood ran down his back. And he was crucified, and his blood was shed. And he was pierced, and the blood came out. Because Jesus had the body, he could shed this blood. And without the shedding of the blood, there wouldn't be any forgiveness. But maybe in the world, there is someone who said, I would die for you and I will be crucified. Maybe there are some people that have said that and done that. But even that person dies for you, he wouldn't be able to forgive your sin because we cannot be forgiven by the death of another sinner. We need someone who is without sin to die in our place. To forgive our sins so that we can go to heaven. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Because of this sinless person, because of Jesus' death, we were saved. Only his life alone. Can give us life. Jesus, who loves us dearly, came down on this earth to take on the body and to die for us. This is the second reason that Jesus came down on this earth. Now, let us think about the third reason that Jesus was born, the final reason. This Bible, especially the books of Gospel, It didn't record every single detail s of what Jesus did and said. It is not a perfect record of every single detail about Jesus' life. Jesus must have said many more things, and he must have done many more miracles that are not in this gospel. So the Apostle John said, if we record what Jesus did, Even the world will not be able to contain what Jesus did. So, Jesus did many, many things and said many words. And Paul, when he was in the city of Miletus, he sent a letter to call all the elders of the churches in Ephesus. And he said to them, Now I know that none of you will see. Me ever again. And many people are saying that Holy Spirit,、uh, and that Holy Spirit warns him that prison and hardships are facing him, and he would 
die in Rome. So this, these words that Paul shared with the elders of Ephesus is the last sermon that he's preached. He said, You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Jesus, Lord Jesus himself. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Here Paul says, The Lord Jesus himself said, and this is the word, but it is not recorded in the gospel of, of the b Bible. Maybe Jesus said that when he was alive, and many people who met Jesus、uh, directly remember that word. Or maybe there were some written records of what Jesus said. And Paul read that record. And as Paul was hearing and reading about what Jesus did and said, he found out that Jesus always acted what he told. Jesus always demonstrated his teachings. And Paul decided, I will live and act like Jesus, just as Jesus gave his life for us. He must be telling us to give our life also for others. So, just as Jesus demonstrated his words, he also evangelized and pastored the church while working to、uh, gain his living for himself. And now it is your turn to give to others what you have received. That is what Paul said to the church of Ephesus. Jesus came down on this earth to demonstrate to us how we should live in a visible form. As the Christmas comes near, it reminds me of one incident. It is something that happened when my son Elijah was born in the Christmas season. In the year 1981, December 16th, Elijah was born. And、uh, this year, on the same day, December 16th, his fourth child was born. <laughs> so, this baby must have been planning to be born on the same day and trying to delay that day of birth because he has been, his birth date has been delayed about one week from the predicted date. So, <laughs> from next year on, We only need one birthday for Elijah and his son, and only one present, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so the, day,、uh, the year before Elijah was born, in the year 1980, my daughter was born in the Christmas season.、Mm. So that year, I was serving. At another church with a Swedish missionary, and a little before my daughter was born, this Swedish missionary came knocking at our door and saying, Merry Christmas! He handed us a Christmas card. And when I opened the envelope, there was money inside. And back then, every at the end of the year, my heart sank because I had to make some payments. I used to be a doctor,、uh, a, a teacher, sorry. I used to be a teacher, but when I became the pastor, I quit the job. And because I had、uh, the student loan from the university, I had to repay that student loan to the university. And that was at the end of the year. And I didn't have enough money for the living and to make that payment. So if I made that payment, I didn't have the money for the living. But I 
made a decision and went to pay the money. And right after that, this missionary came. And he gave me just about the same amount of money I had paid for the student loan. And the Swedish missionary, apparently in Sweden, there are no bonus. And also, they don't receive the monthly salary, but they receive an annual salary. So in the December, their living is very tight. But he gifted this money for me, who had no bonus and even less salary. So he gave not out of abundance, but out of poverty. And the next year, my son was born in the Christmas season, and he was born in the university hospital. And in the university hospital, we had to pay half the cost in the beginning and the rest of the co cost when he leaves the hospital. But we only had a half the exp expense. So if we couldn't pay the rest of the money, maybe Elijah would be, <laughs> would be hospitalized forever. <laughs> And then in the morning of 23rd of December, the day before the discharge, there was another a missionary who uh, took over the Swedish missionary. And that Canadian missionary visited us and he said, Merry Christmas and handed me the Christmas card. And I had some expectation this time because of my experience last year. And when I opened the envelope, I found the card and the money inside. And I was glad. But as I was counting up this money, I was struck by awe. I was very amazed because it was the exact amount we had to pay to the hospital. And of course, the Swedish missionary and this Canadian missionary didn't know that I had to make that payment. The student loan and the hospital fee. And there's no way that they could know the amount of the payment. And they didn't have plenty of money, but they gave us this gift from the limited amount of money. And I learned from these two missionaries the word of Jesus and the word of Paul it is more blessed to give than to receive. If it wasn't for this uh, Christmas present, <laughs> maybe my son Elijah wouldn't be a pastor in Takaneza Church, but he would have been chaplain in the hospital, <laughs> maybe. I learned from these missionaries. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus came down on this, when he came down on this earth, he left everything that he had In heaven, babies are born naked. He came having nothing on this earth. But on his 33 years of life, everything he had, he gave. He gave the food and he gave healing and everything he gave until he died on that cross and gave his life. And the Bible records that Jesus was naked on the cr cross because the Roman soldiers took his clothes off. So he left everything on heaven and he came on this earth and he gave everything and he had nothing left when he died. Why was it? It is to teach us to act in the same way Jesus is saying, I have come to show you it is more blessed to give than to receive. I have given you. Christmas is a season of presents and we rejoice when we receive the presents. But the beginning of the Christmas presents is Jesus who was the Christmas gifts from heaven. So the true meaning of Christmas is us giving the presents just as 
Jesus has given us. This Christmas season, let us reflect on Jesus who came on this Christmas, why he came on this earth. Jesus came for you. Jesus came so that he can、uh, empathize with you. Jesus came to give you eternal life. And Jesus came to give everything to you so that. You may give what you have received from Jesus. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. And because Jesus came down on this earth, we can bring any of our Feelings and problems to Jesus, and He heals us. And thank you that because Jesus died on that cross, we can, our sins are forgiven and we have this eternal life. And that Jesus is speaking to us I have given you my life, I have come to give. What would you do, Lord Jesus? Let us reflect on this. Uh, word of Jesus this Christmas season. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.